Okay. So, um, so uh, we're going to um, focus on flowing movements and postures. Your goal as a as a kinetic. What, what are your goals in terms of the um, practice as a kinetic yoga um, practitioner and instructor, and as a um, um, teacher, you know, as a teacher and practitioner, that's what I would say. Um, one of your goals is, in terms of the physical practice, is to be able to flow, to use the breath, to use uniform breathing and geometric progression and to understand what that means and to, and to, and to internalize those, um, those um, concepts into everything that you do, okay? Um, when you're doing kinetic yoga and you're doing yoga skills method, you should be able to, anybody who looks at you should be able to tell like you're doing a particular style of yoga that's different. It has a unique flavor to it. So as I always say, if I see somebody doing a stronger yoga, I know that's your stronger yoga because it has a unique flavor. If I see somebody doing Iyengar yoga, I know that they're doing Iyengar yoga because it has its own unique flavor, right? And so um, kinetic yoga is the same way. Not only do we do specific movements and postures, which are different than the mainstream movements and postures that you see represented in the yoga world, but um, you know, because we're doing um, practices that you can see on the walls of the temples in, in the ancient kinetic, the ancient Egyptian historical record, right? Very unique postures. But we're also using a technique called ruler for breathing and geometric progression. That means that every posture, every technique that we do is coordinated with the breath, right? And that we are slowly breathing in and slowly breathing out with each posture that we do, with each section within the posture and within the sequence that we're doing. Every time we breathe in, we use the inhalation of the breath to draw energy from three inches below the navel. We move it up through the body to the crown of the head and to the middle of the forehead. This occurs with every single inhalation that we take. With every single exhalation that we take, we send the energy to the arms and into the hands and down the legs and into the feet. And so when we go into our movements and postures, we want our body to become an extension of the breath. So when I go into a forward bending pose, I have to first breathe in, and then I am gradually exhaling as I go into that forward bending pose because I am, the exhalation of the breath allows me to release resistance in my body in order to facilitate the ease of the posture, to make the posture easier so that I'm not fighting against myself. When I exhale, I am letting go. Every time you exhale the breath, you are releasing tension from the body. Every time you exhale the breath, you are releasing some tension from the mind, okay? So you are letting go. Yoga, genetic yoga is the art of letting go, releasing, okay? And so that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a release. We're also trying to achieve a point where we are coordinating the, the breath with every movement and we're causing energy to flow, okay? So we are not just doing the movements and the postures for the purpose of 
lengthening muscles or stretching or, or toning, you know, getting a tighter abdomen or a tighter um, gluteus muscles or to make the, the thighs stronger and looking more good to get the yoga butt, all that kind of stuff, right? You're going to gain physical attributes and fitness and um, development through your practice of yoga automatically, okay? But you wanna put your emphasis on feeling and experiencing the movement of energy, okay? The movement of life force through your body. When life force is not able to move through your body properly, it is causing, it is because there is a blockage in the flow, okay? You have energy channels, just like you have blood vessels. Just think if you had a blood vessel that had a blockage, and the blood can get to your hand or the blood can get to a particular organ within your body. So think about the same way if you have a blockage in the flow of your internal energy to the energy channels of your body and, and, the, and the energy was not able to get to a particular organ or a particular area of your body, okay? So that is going to cause ill health is going to cause an ailment that eventually would manifest itself into something that you would give a definition to or the doctor or whoever diagnosed would give you a name to put on it. But, but regardless of whatever the name of the ailment, whatever the name of the dis disease or the condition, it begins with a blockage in the flow of energy. And this blockage in the flow of energy can be the result of something that you're, something in your mind, a mental or a, <coughs> excuse me, psychological condition. It can be a result of your diet, things that you put into your body, which are toxic. It can be the result of um, stress and trauma that you have experienced <clears throat> at some point in your life. Many of us are experiencing stressors and traumas throughout life, right? And so, um, you know, if you're in a certain socioeconomic, socio-racial demographic, stress is endemic. Stress is always there. And so, your survival depends on how well you deal with the stress. And the stress is going to be minimized or it is going to be mitigated by engaging in practices such as yoga, which is going to um, allow you to cause the energy to flow, okay? And so the movement of energy, just like the movement of blood, just like the movement of nerve impulses through your body, is what keeps you alive. If you don't have blood circulation, you're going to die. Tissues are going to, are going to die if you don't have blood circulation. Tissues in your body, your muscle tissue, your organ tissue are going to die if you do not get inner innervation, if you do not get nerve energy to them, the life force we're talking about, this internal energy is not physical. It cannot be seen on an X-ray or MRI, but we know that it is real because we experience it. And we know from the record that our ancestors left us, they described this energy. They call it shoe. They call it sekum. They use different, um, they call it onk. They use different, um, they use different um, terminology to talk about this energy, to describe this energy, right? And so all ancient people, all traditional people 
all indigenous people recognized that there was something invisible about us, something that was non-physical about us that caused us to be alive. And each one of those groups of people, each one of those traditions, each one of those languages, they put a word or several different words to describe the different manifestations of those energies. And so that's what we're working with when, we, when we're practicing yoga, right? And so um, the movement of energy is what ensures that you are going to remain alive. The movement of energy is what ensures that you are going to remain healthy. The movement of energy is what assures that you're able to heal yourself in the instance that you do acquire a illness, that you do acquire um, some type of um, disease that can manifest in your life. As you move through life, as you live life, or however long that you're living life, you're going to always encounter different obstacles, different challenges to your health and your well-being. You cannot avoid it. The longer, you're, the longer you exist in your physical body, you're going to experience different effects from the fact that you've been here for a particular amount of time, right? The body is not um, imperishable. The body is not forever. The body eventually gives way to the fact that there needs to be a separation between the spirit, the life force, and the physical being. And so that's what we call making that transition that is commonly called death or dying in the mainstream culture. But we know it is simply making a transition from one state of being to another state of being, not an ending, but simply a transition and a continuance of life on another plane. So when you are in this life, when you are in on this, when you are existing and operating on this plane of existence, what you should be focused on is preparing yourself for the next stage of your existence. Think of this as um, high school and you go to high school and your goal is to go to college to get your college degree. Your goal is to get your master's degree after that. The goal is to get your PhD after that. So when you make your transition, that is the same as achieving a higher degree of accomplishment because you're gonna be on a different level. So you have to get the prerequisites that are going to allow you to, to, to um, thrive at the next level. If you have not prepared yourself for grade school, high school, you didn't pay attention in the biology class and the chemistry class and the math class and the history class, when you get to the next level, you're not going to be prepared. And so yoga is a way of preparing you. Meditation is a methodology of preparing you for this next stage of your existence. And so our ancestors, put yourself on mute. So y'all. Not when you got this, right? Shift to get kept. No way. Whoever that was, make sure y'all mute yourself because y'all are talking over the thing. Okay. So we are in a preparatory. So, so when we are living this life, we are in a preparatory um, stage. We are preparing for the next stage, for the next level of our existence. That's what we're doing. That's why we need to take this stuff very, very seriously. Because this is not the end. This is just the beginning of a transition. Okay, so this is preparation. Okay. And so it's important that when you practice yoga, that you practice it properly using the proper techniques. 
And so that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on the proper technique of our particular practice, regardless of what anybody else does in their, in their practice, every different practice, every different school of yoga or school of thought. They have their own you know, concept, their own practices, their own technique. All of that is fine. When you take this course, you forget about that. If you have gone through other, other things and you just open yourself to what you are receiving now because everything is different, right? If I go to a karate class, I'm not going to think like I'm in a kung fu class. If I do kinetic yoga, I'm not going to be remembering and thinking about what I did when I was in a stronger yoga. I'm in kinetic yoga. And so I clear my mind, I come in as an open slate, ready to receive what is being given from that particular perspective. Everything has their own perspective, they have their own cosmology, their own philosophy that informs the practices. So you can't think how you was thinking in the other class. You got to think how you're, you know, you got to think in a way that you're being instructed to think in at this point in time now, okay? And so the other thing we're gonna talk about towards the end is we're gonna talk about some techniques and practices in terms of nutrition and cleansing that you can do that's going to help to enhance longevity, okay? and things that you should incorporate into your lifestyle that is part of the yogic lifestyle. Yoga is a lifestyle. Kinetic yoga is a lifestyle that you engage in. And so um, you have to understand it from that perspective and you have to be dedicated to this particular lifestyle. You have to have a certain allegiance to it, right? This is not a cult, right? It's not like a cult or anything like that, but it is something that you understand can have certain profound benefits for you that can help you to live your everyday life more productively and that can give you the longevity that you may be seeking. And it's not that you're seeking longevity. You want to, you want, you're, what you're seeking is productivity regardless of your age. You're seeking good health regardless of your age. And unless you engage in practices before you get old and broken down, you're not going to achieve those things. You have to engage in the proper practices to preserve yourself, to maintain yourself. It's the same way that you maintain your car so that your car is not broken down. You have to maintain your body. You know, and I don't know any other way to um, even put it. And so um, we're going to begin uh, our practice the way we always do with um, the cleansing breath. Okay. And so um, we want, I'm going to have you. Um, I'm going to have you come onto your back. Onto your mat, on your back. Uh, and you're going to place your, um, I know everybody don't have a sandbag, but you want to get the sandbag, 10 pound sandbag, yoga sandbag, put it on your abdomen. If you don't have the sandbag, put your hands on your abdomen. I'm going to use my sandbag. If you're going to be a kinetic yoga teacher, you should take the time and invest in your sandbag. Place your arms at the side of your body. If you have the sandbag, if you do not, you place your hands on your abdomen. You let your eyes close. Relax your spine against the floor. Relax your neck and your shoulders. Let your facial muscles relax. Let your leg muscles relax. 
Let your arms and your hands relax. Slowly breathe in through your nose and let your abdomen expand. Open your mouth. Slowly exhale through your mouth. Let your mouth close. Reset your body. Slowly breathe in. Open your mouth. Hold your breath in while you relax your throat and your chest. Slow to exhale. Let your mouth close. Inhale through your nose. Hold your breath in, open your mouth, relax your throat and your chest, and then slowly exhale. Now close your mouth. We're going to go into cleansing breath variation two. You're going to breathe in slowly through your nose, let your abdomen expand. Open your mouth, release all the air in one quick burst. Close the mouth, let your body reset itself. Breathe in through your nose, expand the abdomen, not the chest. Hold the breath, open the mouth. Now release all the air at once. Breathe in through your nose. Open your mouth, breathe out. Now, let's transition into Sahu pose. Sahu is the name for mummy. We don't say mummy, we say Sahu. Place your right hand on your chest, right beneath your, your sternum. Place your left hand to the back of your right hand. Make your thumbs touch together, make a pyramid shape. Keep the tip of your tongue very lightly touching the center of your hard palate at the roof of your mouth. Breathe in and out only through your nose. So let your abdomen expand upward as you breathe in. Hold the breath. Slowly breathe out through your nose and feel your body relax. Releasing tension from your spine as you exhale. Feel the weight of your body sink deeper into the earth as you gradually and slowly exhale the breath. After you have released your breath, take one to two seconds, and then you slowly breathe in again. Hold your breath in, slowly exhale through your nose. Relax your body, relax your mind. Allow your mind to become focused and absorbed into the observation of your breathing, observing the slow inhalation of your breath, observing the gradual rising of the abdomen as you breathe in. Hold your breath. 
slowly exhale the breath in your nose and feel your abdomen relaxing. Feel your abdomen sinking downward towards your spine. Feel your spine sinking downward towards the earth. Releasing tension from your facial muscles, from your neck and your shoulders, from your spinal column, from your arms, from your hands and your fingers. Releasing tension from your hips, your thighs, your knees, your lower legs, your ankles and your feet. Breathing in slowly. Slowly exhaling. Breathe in. Slowly exhale. Feel the body relax, feel the mind focus. The mind is clear of all external thoughts. As you breathe in, use your mind to visualize life force rising from three inches below your navel up to the crown of your head and then to the middle of your forehead. As you exhale, use your mind to visualize the energy moving through your arms, into your hands, and at the same time, down your legs and into your feet. Releasing tension, energizing the body with the life force, with the onk force, with the force of she moving through you. Feel your hands becoming warmer as the energy break as the energy radiates in your hands. Feel your feet becoming warmer. As the energy radiates through your feet, feel your entire body becoming warm as you feel the life force rise up the spine, move through the crown of your head, move through the middle of your forehead as you breathe in. And feel the body becoming warmer as the life force moves through your arms, into your hands, and down your legs, and into your feet as you exhale. Now slowly breathe in and lift your hands up off your chest. Slowly exhale and hold your arms down to the floor next to your body. Let your legs come together, your feet together. Flex your feet towards your body. Contract your thigh muscles and place your arms right next to your body with your palms flat. Lift your head and shoulders until your chin comes to your chest. Elevate your hands above your thighs. I want you to exhale and then inhale. Let your body rise up, arms, shoulders height. And with your exhalation, bring your hands down to your knees and release your shoulders. Breathe in. Slowly breathe out. Allow your blood circulation, the time it needs to adjust to your sitting up position. And then cross your legs into sesh pose variation one. Sorry. Have to get 
with somebody else. Okay. <clears throat> so cross your legs into such pose, variation one, which is a simple cross leg position. Okay. Relax your ankles, relax your knees, relax your hips, and let your hands take a firm grip on your front leg. Pull and sit all the way up onto your sit bones. Take your um, forearms and press them down towards your thighs so that your neck is free. Your shoulders are down and flat. So we're freeing up the neck, allowing the Allowing ourselves to be able to turn, move the head in three, in four directions. Tip of the tongue, gently touching the roof of the mouth. As you breathe in, you're going to tilt your head halfway back. As you exhale, release your neck, let your head go back all the way. As you breathe in, you bring your head up straight. As you exhale, roll your head down and touch your chin to your chest. Now raise your head up straight, looking forward, breathe in. And as you exhale, turn your head to the left. Allow each vertebra in your neck to turn one at a time. As you breathe in, you turn your head to the center. And as you exhale, turn your head to the right. Again, allowing each vertebra of your neck to turn one at a time, massaging the internal organs of your throat and the glands of your throat. Now turn your head back to the center, looking forward. Take your right hand and place it underneath your left knee. Place your left hand in the back of your right hand from your chest and shoulder slightly square with your left thigh. Breathe in and lift your chest. With your exhalation, contract your abdomen and lay your chest towards your thigh. Try to get your chin to come down towards your knee. Breathe in. Slowly breathe out, relax your knees, relax your ankles, relax your hips, relax your shoulders. Let go of your leg and breathe in and rise up and turn to your right. And with your exhalation, place your hands underneath your right knee. As you inhale, lift your chest and flatten your back. As you are exhaling, releasing. Lower your chest towards your thigh. Lower your chin towards your knee. Let your arms wrap around your legs. You got to squeeze your chest to thigh. When you breathe in, you let your abdomen expand. When you breathe out, you let your abdomen contract. And then let go of your legs and breathe in and rise up. Let your arms follow your body. And with your exhalation, let your hands come around your knees. With your inhalation, lift your chest, flatten your back. With your exhalation, ease your body forward. Holding your body inhale from the waist. Inhale and extend your arms. Exhale and put your hands down. And breathe in. Slowly breathe out. Breathe in and rise up, arms next to your ears. Put the thumb and four fingers together, and as you exhale, release your wrist down to your knees. And then close your eyes and breathe in and out slowly through your nose. Remember to keep the tip of the tongue connected to the roof of your mouth. So slowly breathe in. Slowly exhale, relaxing your neck and shoulders, relaxing your knees and ankles. Feeling the hands and the fingers energized with life force. Move the energy with your mind. Move it up your spine. Move it to the crown of your head. 
move it to the middle of your forehead using your own intention, your own thoughts, along with the inhalation of your breath. Move the energy to your arms and into your hands as you exhale. Also down your legs and into your feet. You can continue to feel your entire body begin to glow with the life force, with the energy. Now, take your right hand. You're going to put your thumb against your right nostril. And you want to breathe in slowly to your left nostril. And then you're going to slowly exhale to your left. Close your left nostril, open your right nostril, breathe in to your right. Breathe out to your right. Close your right nostril, inhale to your left. Close your left, open your right, exhale out to your right. Breathe into your right, fill up your lungs, all the way up into your chest. Close your right, open your left, exhale out to your left, into your lungs. Now, breathe in to your left to count to four. Close your left, open your right, exhale and count to eight. Breathe in to your right and count to four. Close your right, open your left, exhale and count to eight. Breathe into your left and count to four. Close both your mouths to shut. Hold it and count to 16. Open your right nostril, exhale and count to eight. Breathe in to your right and count to four. Close both your nostrils shut, count to 16. Open your left nostril, exhale and count to eight. Breathe into your left and count to four. Hold both your nostrils shut, count to 16. Open your right nostril, exhale for eight. Breathe 
Breathe into your right and count to four. So both your nostrils shut, count to 16. Open your left nostril, exhale, and count to eight. You move your right hand from your nose, put your thumb and four fingers together, put your wrist to your knee, and then breathe through your nose. Inhale and exhale slowly. Maintain this position, keep your eyes closed. I have to admit somebody into the room. So just maintain the position, breathe in and out slowly through your nostrils. Kind of experience the changes internally within your being that have been caused by the breathing, by the movement. Experiencing the change in the flow of your energy, your life force. Now, uncross your legs. Bring your legs out in front and wiggle your toes. And shake your knees out. Okay. Now keep your legs together. We're going to slightly bend the knees, make a slight little pyramid shape with the knees. And you're going to place your hands behind your knees. You're going to sit all the way up onto your sit bones. So that means that you're going to go from here to here. Release your shoulders. Let your hands slide down towards your ankles. Take your left hand and put it in the back of your left leg. Put your right hand in the back of your right leg. So with your inhalation, lift your chest. With your exhalation, lower your head down. And bring your chin towards your knees. And breathe in. Exhale, lift your chest as close to your thighs as you can. Allow your chin to go down towards your knees. You have to let go of your neck. You're not holding any resistance in your body. Breathe in. And then breathe out. Let go of your legs, extend your arms, inhale up, put your legs flat, flex your feet towards you. Exhale the hands down to your knees. Release your shoulders and breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. Slowly breathe out. Bend your knees a little bit, flexing your feet towards you. Place your hands behind your knees and sit up onto your sit bones. Sliding the hands down towards the ankles. Place your left hand in the back of your left leg. Place your right hand in the back of your right leg. Breathe in and lift your chest, flatten your back. And then use your exhalation to lower your chest downward. Try to get your chin towards your knee. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. 
Breathe in. Exhale. Release. Inhale up. Put your legs flat. Exhale. Releasing. Send the energy to your arms and into your hands. Flexing your feet towards you. And inhale. And slowly exhale. And breathe in. And breathe out. One more time. In the knees, like the feet. Hands behind the knees, sit up. Slide the hands down. Left hand behind the left leg, right hand behind the right leg. Inhale to lift your chest. As you exhale, try to contract your abdomen. Suck your belly in and lay your chest close to your thighs. Try to get your chin as close to your knees as you can. And then you want to go deeper each time you exhale. Breathe in, exhale, release, extend, inhale up, put your legs flat, exhale, your hands down, put your palms to the knees, and then breathe in, slowly breathe out. Now keep your legs out in front of you and flex your feet towards you. Extend your arms to the side and put your fingertips to the floor. Rotate your arms so that your palms face up. As you breathe in, lift your arms. Exhale and put your hands together. Inhale and turn your hands forward. And as you exhale, reach for your feet. I want you to grab your feet. I want you to breathe in again. And as you exhale, I want you to release forward. Grab your further on your, over the top of your feet. And breathe in. Slowly exhale. Let go of your feet and rise up. Inhale. Exhale your hands around and down to your knees. And breathe in, and then slowly breathe out. Release your shoulders, let the weight of your body sink into the floor, into the earth. Okay? Now from here, we're going to come on to the spine. We place the hands next to the body, and we're going to slide the buttocks so that we can bend the knees. And then we're going to come onto the back. With the knees bent, the feet flat on the floor, the arms on the floor next to the body. We take the right thigh, we bring it up towards the chest. We place the hands around the knee, around the leg, and we pull the thigh in towards the chest, releasing the lower back, releasing the right hip. And then we breathe in and we exhale the chin to the knee. We breathe in again and we exhale and we straighten the left leg, keeping the left foot about three inches off of the floor. And breathe in and breathe out. Let the back of the head come down, bend the left knee, put the right foot down next to the left foot. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Let your left knee go up. Put your hands around the left leg and breathe in. Exhale and pull the thigh in towards the chest. Inhale. Exhale the chin towards the knee. Breathe in. Exhale and straighten the right leg and keep your right foot about three inches off the floor. Hold this position and breathe in. Slowly breathe out. Let the back of your head touch the mat. Bend your right knee, put your right foot to the mat, and then bring your left foot down next to your right foot. And breathe in and breathe out. 
Bring both of your thighs up towards your chest and pull your legs in and trust your abdomen. Let your arms wrap around your legs and squeeze in. I mean, breathe in, exhale, bring your head up in the chin towards your knee. Contract your abdomen, releasing your back. Breathe in, exhale the back of the head to the mat. Let your hands slide down towards your ankles and separate your feet. Holding on to your legs right above the ankles, get a nice grip. Breathe in and begin to lift your lower back, lift your middle back, and as you exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together and push your pelvis upward. And breathe in, slowly breathe out. Breathe in, slowly breathe out. Breathe in. Exhale and tuck your hips and ease your spine down to the floor. Tuck your pelvis until your spine is completely flat. Your hands maintain their position around the ankles, right above, right on the lower legs, right above the ankles. And then breathe in, slowly breathe out. As you breathe in, lift your lower back, lift your middle back. As you exhale, squeeze the shoulder blades together and push the pelvis up. Breathe in, slowly breathe out. Breathe in, exhale, inhale. As you exhale, tuck your hips and ease your spine down to the floor and relax. And inhale and gradually exhale. And breathe in. Slowly breathe out. And for the last time, inhale and begin to lift your low back, lift your middle back. And as you exhale, squeeze your shoulder blades together, push your pelvis up, engage your thigh muscle, keep the back of your neck straight and flat towards the floor, your chin towards your chest. You breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, Exhale yourself down, releasing. Spine all the way flat. Inhale. And as you exhale, let go of your legs, let your legs slide down, your feet are shoulders width apart. Place your right palm on your lower chest. Your left hand to the back of your right hand, your thumbs are touching, making a pyramid shape. And you breathe in slowly. And you breathe out slowly. And breathe in. Slowly exhale, the eyes are closed, the lips are together. The tip of the tongue is connected to the roof of the mouth. Let your abdomen expand gradually and slowly. As you gradually and slowly breathe in, feel your abdomen contracting gradually and slowly as you exhale and feel the weight of your body go deeper into the earth. Releasing more and more tension from the body. Releasing those deep, deeply held traumas and stressors out of your body. Let them go as you exhale your breath. Let them go from your lower belly area, out of your organs, out of your colon, your intestines, 
how did your reproductive organs let them go and your body was able to heal itself? Releasing. Each exhalation is a release. Each exhalation is a release of energy, a release of um, tension, a release of stress, a release of trauma. It may have accumulated somewhere within your body and you have to let go, let go from the kidneys, let go from the liver, let go from the pancreas. When you breathe in, use your mind to visualize the liver becoming nourished, the kidneys becoming nourished, the intestines and the colon being nourished, by the light force and the energy that you're taking in. As you exhale, release, relax, and let go of everything that's not, that does not serve you. Negative thoughts, anger, thoughts such as lack of confidence, Lack of self esteem. Let those thoughts go. Let those memories go and resolve them as you exhale the breath. Now, allow your hands to rise up as you breathe in. As you exhale, bring your hands to the floor next to your body. Let your legs come together, let your feet come together, let your arms come all the way in next to you, flex your feet towards you, lift your head and shoulders, bring your chin to your chest, elevate your hands above your thighs, inhale, and let your body rise up, arms and shoulders height. Exhale and relax your arms, let your hands come down to your knees, release your shoulders. And breathe in, slowly breathe out. Now, come up onto your hands and knees. We're going to go into the next posture, which is called Sesh Pose Variation 2. So we come into the hands and knees into our tabletop position. We fold the toes underneath the feet. We take the hands and we place them next to the legs and ease the weight gradually onto the heels. And we take a seat and we let the toes lengthen. We let the ankles open. We let the palms rest against the thighs. This is an ancient Tibetan posture called Sesh Pose. Sesh Pose. Second variation. And we breathe in. We slowly breathe out. We breathe in. We slowly exhale. We relax the toes. We relax the ankles. We use the inhalation of the breath to elevate the arms to show this height. We use the exhalation of the breath to come into our hands and knees. We lift the feet and we wiggle the toes back and forth. We point the feet, point the toes, take the feet steps down. We place the hands next to the legs. And we're going to go into sesh pose variation three. Okay? Palms on your thighs. Take your time. Gradually place yourself into position. You have to use your breath. Use your inhalation and inhalation. Okay, hold the position. Somebody is making noise. May I ask a question, please? No. <laughs> you have to wait till we finish. I'll be in the flow. Hands next to your body. Hands on your thighs, palms on the floor, palms on your thighs. 
We're going to use the inhalation of the breath to make pyramid shape. We're going to use the exhalation to put your hands to the mat. Use your inhalation to lift your chest. Use your exhalation to bring your chest to your thighs and bring your forehead into the pyramid. As you hold this position, breathe in and out slowly. As you breathe in and breathe out, let your abdomen expand against your thighs as you breathe in. Let your abdomen contract as you exhale. Breathe in slowly. Breathe out slowly. As you breathe in, let your body rise up. Let your arms rise up to shoulders height. Spread your thumbs away from your fingers, okay? This might be a little hard, so if you need to sit this portion out, it's okay. You can put your thumbs into the center of your feet. You can put your rest of your palm to the floor. Now, don't force this position. This is called Kepra, Kepra position, okay? Variation one of the Kepra pose. Now, don't force it. If you, if you don't feel comfortable enough, do not try it. You have to breathe in. Exhale, come down to your forearms. Release your neck, let your head go back. Breathe in. Breathe out. Bring your head up, bring your chin to your chest. Gather your weight into your hands. You can use your arms, your hands to push you up. Do not use your back. Do not straighten your back. If you come up onto your hands and knees again, okay? <clears throat> now, wiggle your toes. And if you have some questions, just save your question. I'm, I'm sorry, but they need to be rude and stuff. But just save your question until we get finished. Okay? Um, but you want to move your toes. And from here, we're going to take the left foot. Let me see. I'm sorry. We're going to take the right foot. And we're going to bring the right foot next to the left knee. We're going to use the hands. So this is the left leg. We're going to sit down onto the instep of the left leg. We take a seat. We keep the back straight. We take the hands and we bring the palms together. We inhale the right arm to the inside of the right knee. And we use this right arm inside the knee as leverage to get the body to turn out to the left. And we want to lower that left shoulder so that both the shoulders are even. And then we bring the fingertips together, palms facing the chest. And as we are exhaling, we open up the arms. So we're turning to the, out to the left. The arms are bent. See the bend in the elbows. The right arm is locked to the inside of the right knee. And then we make our fist with the hands. And then we breathe in, and as we exhale, we turn the head and we look towards the right. We inhale, we bring the chin over the chest. We exhale, we look towards the left. And as you breathe in, turn the left fist to the right fist. Exhale, the palms together, lower the hands down. Okay, um, Bucky, you're doing the opposite. You're doing everything backwards. Okay, switch to the other side. Okay, look at me, Bucky. Legs together, my left foot. This is my left leg, okay? Then I'm going to sit down. This is my right leg. I'm going to sit onto my right leg. Then my hands are here. Then my left arm goes to the inside of my left knee. And I turn to the right. I got to turn out towards the right. 
And then I bring my fingertips together in front of my chest. And then when I inhale, I open my arms. When I exhale, I make my fist. I breathe in, I exhale, and I turn my head. This is called pose of immortality. I inhale my chin over the chest. I exhale, and I look to my right. And as I breathe in, I bring the right fist to the left fist. As I exhale, I bring the palms together, and then I lower the hands down, and I come up onto my hands and my knees. And then I take a seat, bring my legs out in front. Okay? Now wiggle the toes. And I shake the knees out. Okay? Now I'm gonna stress the knees. Wiggle the toes. Take out the knees, take any, um, so that there's no um, kinks coming up or building up in the knees, right? Okay, so we just, we just getting the body familiar with some of these postures and we're just warming up the different joints, warming up the toes, warming up the ankles, warming up the knees, warming up the spinal column, twisting from side to side, right? Okay, now let's stand up. We're gonna bring the feet in. We're gonna transfer the weight onto the bottom of the feet, chest towards the thigh. And then we straighten the legs. And then we come up with the inhalation. And then exhale. Right? Okay, stay with me. We don't have you. Um, you're gonna come up to the front part of your mat. So with your feet, we're gonna go into our sun salutation from the standing position. So we're starting off with our feet together, the toes touching, the heels are slightly separated. Then from here, we're going to bend the knees. We're going to tuck the hips. We're going to release the weight into the bottom of the feet. Bend your knees slightly, pelvis tuck. And then breathe in, exhale your hands together in front of your thighs. As you inhale, your arms rise, your palms come together, your arms make a pyramid shape. And with your exhalation, release your palms in front of your chest. With your inhalation, let your legs straighten. Push your hips forward, arch your spine. Thumb and forefingers come together. Exhale, open up your arms, release your neck, release your shoulders. Breathe out, breathe in and rise up. With your exhalation, lower your hands in front of your chest. With your inhalation, straighten your legs. Extend your arms forward. As you exhale, shift your hips back and bend your body forward until you're able to touch your fingertips to the mat. Inhale and separate your arms, shoulders width apart. And as you exhale, put your knuckles to the floor. Breathe in and reach back and grab your lower legs. As you exhale, try to bring your chest to your thighs. Try to bring your chin to your knees. Inhale your hands with the pyramid. Exhale your palms back to the floor. Now, <clears throat> move your hands next to your feet. Inhale your left leg up and back. Slide it back. Lower your hips, bring your chest up and look forward. Now breathe in. As you exhale, lower your left knee. Point your left foot. Place your arms underneath your right thigh. Now breathe in and rise up. Now exhale and bring hands together. 
Inhale and bring your left hand behind the right. Exhale and bring your palms down to your right knee. Breathe in. Exhale and lengthen your left thigh. Breathe in and lift your chest. Exhale, arch your spine. Breathe in and let your head come up. Exhale, your chest to your thigh. Separate your hands and ease your hands down to the mat. Okay, so we're going to go to the level, um, the second level of sun salutation, right? Bend your toes of your left foot and lift your left knee up. Rotate the bottom of your left foot flat to the mat. Put your right hand to the inside of your right foot. Keep your right arm straight next to your right leg. Put your left hand to your right wrist and let your left hand slide up your arm, come to your chest, point the elbow up, and then extend the left arm. Inhale the left arm to the front and extend it out and over your ear as you are exhaling. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale the right hand forward and then turn your body and let both hands meet together. This is called the Rue Warrior Pose. Breathe in. Exhale the left hand down next to your right foot. Turn. Look up at your right hand. Breathe in. Exhale the right hand down. Bend the toes of the left foot. Inhale the right leg up. Exhale it down next to your left foot. Breathe in. Exhale and dip down. Inhale up. Exhale, arch your spine. Now breathe in. Breathe out. Hold your toes, lift your knees. Inhale up. Adjust your feet. Exhale and press back. Inhale up to the bones of your feet. Exhale your knees down. Let your head come up. Point your toes and place your insteps down. Place your right hand in front of your right knee. Your left hand in front of your left knee. Sit down onto your heels. Take your right forearm. Bring it down. Take your left forearm. Bring it down. Breathe in, slowly breathe out. Extend your arms. Inhale. As you exhale, transfer your weight from your knees into your hands. Inhale up. Exhale, arch your spine back. Breathe in, breathe out. Fold your toes, lift your knees, inhale up, adjust your feet. Exhale and push back and try to get your heels to the floor. Now breathe in, rise up to the bottom of your feet. Slowly exhale your knees down. Let your head come up, point your toes and place your insteps down. Now breathe in, bend your knees into Nesu Heru, child pose. Put your chest towards your thighs. Put your forehead down towards the mat. As you hold the position, breathe in slowly, breathe out slowly. Let your abdomen expand as you breathe in. Let your abdomen contract as you breathe out. Now rise up onto your hands and knees. Take your left leg and bring it forward. Bend the toes of your right leg, of your right foot, and lift your right knee up. Point your right heel all the way up. Get the toes bent at a 90 degree angle. Roll your hips, bring your chest up. Keep your neck. Shoulders and facial muscles relax. Now breathe in, exhale the right knee down. 
Point your right foot. Place your arms underneath the left thigh. As you breathe in, you're rising up. As you exhale, you put your hands together. Inhale the left hand behind the right. Exhale the hands down to the left knee. Now breathe in, slowly exhale. Lift in and open up your right thigh, your right hip. Go into a half split. Breathe in and lift your chest. Exhale, arch your spine. Let your head come up. Let your chest come down. Separate your hands and ease them down to the neck. Bend the toes of your right foot and lift your right knee. Rotate the bottom or your right foot flat. Let your left hand come to the inside of your left knee. I'm sorry, the inside of your left foot. Put your right hand to your left wrist and slide it up the arm, bring it to your chest, turn on the waist, and extend the right arm up. Inhale the right arm to the front. Exhale it out over your ear. Inhale the right arm up. Exhale the left hand forward. Bring both your hands together. <clears throat> Breathe in. Exhale, right hand down. Left arm up. Look up. At your look up at your right hand, at your left hand rather. Look up at your left hand, twist your spine, and lower your left hand down. Come up onto your right foot. Step forward. Bring both your feet together. <clears throat> I'm gonna stay in the picture. Bend forward. Try to get your knuckles to the floor. Breathe in and reach back and grab your lower legs. Exhale your chest and your thigh and your chin towards your knee. Inhale your hands to pyramid. Exhale your palms flat. Break your legs. Inhale up. Exhale palms in front of your chest. Inhale the arms up. Hips forward, arch your spine. Exhale, open up your chest. Inhale up. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale. Releasing, hands down. Next to your body. And then breathe in and breathe out. Okay. Now, I need you to step into the center of your mat. Legs, feet together, legs together. Let your knees bend, let your pelvis tuck. As you breathe in, straighten your legs. Shifting your hips back, bending your body forward, bring your chin down towards your chest. Keep your legs straight as much as you can. Try to get your knuckles towards the mat. Now, put your fingertips to the floor, lift your heels off the floor, bending at your toes, hinge your feet at the toes. And then let the knees come down to the mat, opening up your toes, okay? Let your hands rest upon your thighs. Now breathe in, slowly breathe out. Inhale and let your arms rise to shoulders height. Exhale and come forward. Come up, forward to your hands and knees and wiggle your toes. Point your feet and place your insteps down. Place your hands next to your legs and ease your weight down onto your heels. On to sesh pose variation three. Come up, sit up straight, lower your shoulders. Let your palms rest against your thighs comfortably. 
with your inhalation, place your hands into Merkut. Merkut means pyramid. Hands down to the floor. We're going to go into Merkut, pyramid, Mesu Heru. Mesu Heru is child pose. Lower your chest to your thighs. Put your forehead into the pyramid if your hands are making. As you hold the position, breathe in and out slowly through your nose. As you breathe in, let your body rise up. Let your arms follow shoulders height. And then exhale and bring your thumbs into the center of your feet. Place the rest of your palm against the floor. You're going to keep your legs, your knees on the, on the, on the floor. We're going to isolate in the spine. When you breathe in, you're going to lift your chest. You're going to arch your spine. Bring your breath all the way through to the chest. And as you exhale, come on to your forearms and release. And breathe in. Exhale. Relax your neck, relax your shoulders. Breathe in and fill up your lungs. Exhale the top of the head down towards the neck. Bring your head up with your chin to your chest. Gather your strength into your hands and lift up by using your arms. Do not strain your back. Exhale. Rising up. Going to your hands and knees. Okay. Now the next pose we're gonna do, I only recommend it if you've done it before. Some of you have done it before with me in the past. We're gonna go into a headstand, part of our flow. And you're gonna make the transition with the fingers. If you haven't done it before, if you're not comfortable, you just sit down and watch, watch and observe. You come up to the palm, uh, interlace the fingers together. You're going to place the head so that the back of the head is comfortably against the, um, the hands, comfortably against, I know you might not be able to hear me. Lift. Try to breathe in and out slowly through your nose. Try to relax your abdominal area so that all your organs go down towards the floor. Bend your knees. Bring your feet down to the mat. And go into Mesu Heru. Merkut Mesu Heru. Breathe in and out slowly through your nose. Now, let's rise up. Let's bend the knees. I'm sorry, let's bend the toes underneath the feet. And then let's take a seat. And then from here, we're going to straighten the legs, bending forward. Inhale the body up. Rise it up. <clears throat> to a standing position. <clears throat> Let's see. And from here, make a little adjustment. We're going to go into pose of immortality on both sides from standing position. So we breathe in, and as we exhale, we bring the hands together in front of the thighs. As we inhale, we bring the arms up, palms together, make pyramid shape with the arms. 
As we exhale, we bring the palms in front of the chest. We shift the weight into the right foot. And we inhale the left knee up, we point the left foot down. We exhale the top of the left foot back. And then we tuck the hips. We breathe in and we exhale and we ease down, sitting down onto the left heel. We inhale the right arm to the inside of the right knee. We turn out to the left. From here, we let the fingertips come together. Inhale and open up. Exhale and make fists. Inhale. Exhale and turn the head to the right. Inhale and turn the head to the center. Exhale to the left. Inhale the left fist to the right fist. Exhale the palms in front of the chest. Breathe in and push and rise up for your inhalation. Now exhale, sink your weight into your right foot. Bring your left foot and then pivot. Coming to the center. Turn to your left. Take your right foot, place the top of the right foot towards the mat and touch your hips. Breathe in, and exhale the knees downward. Inhale the left arm to the inside of the left knee. Turn, pivot to your right. Palms together, palms flat. Bring your fingertips together, palms facing your chest. Now breathe in and open up. Exhale, make your fist. Inhale. Exhale, your head to the left. Inhale, your head to the center. Exhale, to the right. Inhale, the right fist to the left fist. Exhale, open up your palms. Breathe in and rise up. Push with your legs. Exhale, inhale, left leg up, exhale, I'm sorry, right leg up, exhale, right foot down next to the left foot, and then from here we breathe in, and as we are exhaling, we bring the hands down in front of the thighs, and then to the side, and then breathe in slowly, Exhale slowly. Okay. And from here, we're going to take our time. We breathe in. We shift the hips back as we exhale, bending forward. Try to lengthen the spine, lengthen the muscles in the back of the legs. Bend the knees. Take a seat. Legs come down, separate your feet, shoulders to the top. Place your right hand on your lower chest, your left hand on the back of your right. Breathing slowly and deeply through your nostrils. Continue to breathe slow and deep. Let your abdomen expand. As you inhale, let your abdomen contract. As you are exhaling, slowly inhale, slowly exhale. Out slowly.
Now to move the energy up the spine as you breathe in through the arms into the hands, down the legs, and into your feet as you exhale. After you exhale for the last time, breathe in and lift your hands up off your chest. Exhale and roll your arms down to the floor next to your body. Bring your legs together, bring your feet together. Flex your feet towards you. Arms next to your body, palms flat. Lift your head and shoulders and bring your chin to your chest. Elevate your hands above your thighs. Now exhale, squeeze the abdominal muscles and lift up. Exhale, your hands down to your knees, let your shoulders relax. So breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly, releasing the weight of your body down into the earth. Try to feel the changes that have taken place over your body. Allow your blood circulation the time it needs to adjust to the sitting up position. Okay. Then um, I think that's all we're going to do for practice today. Um, so I want to um, open it up for any questions anybody might have before we begin, before, before we go to the next phase of what we're going to do today. Okay. I had a question about the posture when we're in such, such pose variation. Are our knees supposed to be together? Or is there a little bit of space between them? It needs to be together. You want your thighs and your knees to be yeah. together. Yeah. Okay. And then right. also I'm finding. I'm sorry, go ahead. But if you cannot touch them together, they may separate a little bit. Everybody's body is different. Right. Okay. So, so don't so don't fret over, you know, little things like that. But just trying to get okay. them as together as they can. Okay. And then over time. Is this true when we're in such pose with our feet are flat on the floor and the tops of our feet are on the floor and our heels should be into our buttocks, yes? Yeah, you want your buttocks. Ideally, you want your buttocks to touch your heels. Right, okay. Because my, my, my heels tend to like go outward and I, I'm assuming that it's just because I haven't done this enough to really like get it right these, these these practices are developmental so you have yeah. to give your body time to change as i keep as i as i always say when i first started to do yoga i couldn't do nothing i couldn't even sit down across my legs okay so you have to give your body time it took me two years before i could do certain things it took me seven years to do other things, right? So you have to give yourself time. It's not a rush. No, and I'm what, not rushing. I just wanted to make sure I was doing it right. Yeah, I'm not saying that you're rushing. I'm just giving, I'm just saying in general, there's not a, there's no, don't, so whoever it is, whoever, I'm not even talking, I'm just talking to everybody or whoever I'm talking to. Don't rush. There is no technique. I can't tell you how to, I can't tell you how to make your body open up faster, how to make your body change faster, right? It's no, it's no shortcut. It's no technique. I, can, I can't tell you what. Just do this and your feet will stay together. Or just do that and your thighs will stay together. There's no techniques like that. It's developmental. Your body has to change. When I first started doing yoga and I sat down across my legs, I was like this. And I couldn't even sit up, right? So I had to go from that. So it took me two years to go from that to get to here. You know, 
just to send it to Lotus or Half Lotus. So you have to, so, so, so I'm just saying it here, not, not to be directed. You have to take your time and you have to um, be patient. One of your biggest yoga skills is patience. Patience and perseverance. Those are the two skills that you want to learn and to incorporate into your, into your consciousness. Being patient and having perseverance. That means that you practice every day. Do you practice every day? I'm, the, I'm just asking the question rhetorically. You don't have to answer. But I'm saying a person should practice daily. You should have a daily practice. The more you practice, the better you were going to feel. The more you practice, the more your body is going to respond, the more your body is going to change. We are not doing the practices simply because we want to be able to fit the body into a different position. That is not what the goal is. By practicing and training ourselves to get into the positions, we are acquiring certain mental, emotional, cognitive, um, psycho-emotional, psycho-spiritual skills through doing that, right? If we are challenged with a particular posture, meaning that when you cross your legs, you're like this, you all locked up and stiff, and you, you can just bring yourself to be able to become comfortable over a period of time, that means that you have to engage in a mental process that is going to benefit you for the rest of your life because you're learning certain skills as you go through that developmental process. So it's not about, I just want to get into the position so I can look pretty. It's about, I'm going to get into this posture. I want to master this posture or at least become proficient in this posture because number one, by doing the posture, it's an indication that I am improving the health and the wellness of my body, but also I'm improving the health and the wellness and the dexterity of my mind and my psycho-emotional self. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Any other questions or comments about that? Hey, Master, uh, it's Anna. When you are in the standing position and you are doing this uh, posture in which we open, um, uh, open the chest and lower the arms by the side, do uh, the arms should be bent or should them be uh, straight? You want your arms to be the state bent like this. So, okay. you want, so you're talking about when we're doing sun salutation, we go up, we put the thumb and the four fingers together, we, and, we, and so basically what we're trying to do, we're trying to open the chest like this, and we're trying to let the head go back, okay? Now, sometimes you might see, it might look like my arms are going out like that a little bit because sometimes I'm not as careful with it. But you want to try to keep the elbows bent to some degree. But you're trying to put the emphasis on opening up the chest, opening up the sternum. This area of your chest, that's called your sternum. And that's where your, um, your, bronchial, your bronchial passages are. So let's think of your... Just think of this area of your windpipe like a tree with branches. And so you've got your lungs over here and you've got this windpipe here and it branches off into the lungs. It's got branches. That's why they call it bronchial passages. And you want to open all of that up. So when we're doing sun salutation, the reason why it's called sun salutation is because we are opening up the chest to the sun at 12 o'clock. So when we go backward, we're opening up the chest to the sun. That's why it's called sun salutation. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? When we're in Heru child's pose, uh, bringing our forehead down to the pyramid, um, my, my buttocks comes up. Is it better to keep that position or does the forehead need to touch or can it just be going toward the floor? Again, nobody's, 
my, my when I do that position, sometimes depending upon the upon the, upon my um, where my body is at, sometimes my butt can't stay on the heels and stuff like that. Just go as far as you can go, and um, in the ideal world, you want your buttocks to stay on your heels, and you want your chest to come to your thighs, and you want your forehead to go into the pyramid. But another time, that's not going to happen, right? So it's probably um, so. Just get to, just get as close as you can. Try to get your forehead into the pyramid, though. Because I, I know that I know that's the gist of your question. Which one is more important, you know? And so that's and, and, and also, if you think about it, we did certain we did certain precursors to some of these poses, right? So when we so we did this, we went through a sequence. We did this. We did this. We came back up. We did this. When we go back like that. That's going to open up all of all up in here. That's going to open up the ankles, and all of those different positions that we're doing are all working together, so that when you so that when you get back into your um, Merku your room, your body will be more perfectly into it. Okay. Sometimes you have to eliminate some belly fat. Okay. So that's why I always have to work on my belly because my belly is like, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, so you got to work on your belly. Yes, that's sir. Another, that's another thing we got to, we got to um, talk about too. I'm going to talk about some things. I'm going to talk about the, that concept. And I'm not, I don't even know who I'm talking to, but I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying you got a big belly. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying a lot of times, um, People are asking me questions about different postures, right? And a lot of times you have to change your diet. Go on to that fast, right? Cleanse yourself to allow your body to change. That's what we're gonna, that, that's the next part I wanna talk about when I get finished with the questions. Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Bucky, Bucky, Bucky's here. All right, Bucky. I was reviewing the earlier meetings um, uh, throughout the week. And in one of them, you were talking about rotating your head like this and, and saying that it's not advisable. My question is, what about, this is something I do, what about rotating the other end of the spine from the trunk end? Would you say the same thing about rotating the spine while you're standing? as a uh, loosening, is that the same? Would you have the same answer as rotating the neck, rotating the spine, and also rotating the knees from a standing position, which I've seen in like some Qigong videos and such? I mean, if you're gonna do Qigong and that's what they put in the video, do, do that. I'm talking about this. So I, I cannot speak to everything that everybody else does that they recommend it, you know? But um, in terms of the neck, I can show you uh, where um, nephropaths and chiropractors and doctors say don't put don't don't do your hair like that. It's okay. not you know, when you're doing your hair like when you're doing your hair in that rotating. That is not natural. That's not you're damaging your neck. Okay, right. people do this in yoga all the time, and they think just because somebody else taught them how to do that or told them to do that that it's okay because that's what they was taught. There's a lot of things in yoga. Yoga causes, if you look at the statistics, if you do the research, look at the statistics, like hundreds of thousands of injuries are caused in yoga studios every year. People tear their Achilles tendons in yoga classes, right? Because they're doing these extreme or weird type of practices that don't make any sense because they put an emphasis on the wrong thing. I know that's not what you're asking me, but I'm just trying to, when I, when I, when I answer the question, I try to answer it globally, right? Mm -hmm. So, so um, when you, so the most natural way to, to let your head, if you want to release tension from your neck, let it go back, let it come up, let it go forward, let it come up, turn to your left, turn to your center, 
turn to the right. That's the way we do it. And we get we coordinate it with the breath. You know, they, they, when you go when you go to dance class, martial arts classes, they're gonna tell you to do these, you know, do different hip rotations, you know, that other other than the spine. I'm I'm speaking of the neck. Okay. All right. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I haven't thought about the hips and all that, but I know this is, this one is, is um, not advised. I don't think the hip ones and the knees, when they be telling me that, I don't think it's, I don't think it's that bad, you know, but the neck is not a good, a good thing to do. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Hi, Sir. This is Chai. Um, can you hear me? Yes, hi, Chai. Hi, Chai. Like Chai Chai, I, I, Chai. I, I know who you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm, um, I'm so bad with talking. You know, I'm, I'm from Chicago. We never learned how to talk properly. <laughs> it's all good. I hear you. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice for teaching children this flow as far as like starting from Sahu pose, or is there a different variation to start from? Um, children like between the ages of three and nine or three and eight, trying to keep them focused or is it just being patient and letting them like run around or? You can't, you can't teach kids the same way you teach adults. You yeah. Intolerance level for them. So I got two videos that, that you have. You got, you got two videos on, on, on YouTube that's teaching you how to teach children in that age range, both movements and postures and meditation. So I would just say, follow those two videos. We have another video with me teaching a young lady named Amber who's in um, Las Vegas. She, she, I think at the time, I just saw her picture today going to the prom or something, and homecoming or something. She like turned into a little lady. But um, she was like 12 or 13 years old on the picture, on the video that we made. But um, I say follow those videos because you can't, you know, I, I, I can't tell you the, the, these things is hard. Kids are not going to be able to do this stuff. So you got to teach kids different. It's got to be like a game. It's got to be like fun, you know. And so, so use those use those videos that you have. And plus, you, in your training manual, you have a whole section on teaching yoga to children with different movements and postures and instruction and everything. So just use that. You're not going to teach them this this stuff here. Now, when you get somebody that's a teenager. Or somebody that's more serious minded, or somebody that's more focused, you can start taking them through this. But everything just has to be age appropriate. Hope that makes sense. That does make sense. Thank you. I'll check out the manual and the videos. Look in the manual, look in the videos. If you don't have, you know, in, 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 your, um, in your six part, um, I don't know if it's even in there, but on YouTube, go to YouTube. Yogaskills.com slash um, YouTube.com slash yoga skills. I got the videos in there for teaching yoga to children. And they might be in your packet, I'm not sure. But if you don't have them and if you want to talk to me more about this, email me or call me and I'll make sure you get everything. Perfect. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Yep. Excuse yep. me, Mr. Yasir. This is Rock Shimmies with a question. Um, seeing as how we're on the topic of teaching to special populations, what are your thoughts on utilizing props for comedic yoga for people with special needs or um, like seniors um, as far as maybe doing, um, utilizing a chair or use, like, utilizing a block or a strap to make it accessible um, for those who might not be able to have the full range of motion due to disabilities or age. For sure, use props. We have a whole video on Tia Yoga on, on our YouTube channel with, Dar with Darlene Blackburn, who, who's one of our specialists in um, chair yoga. And then Deborah Leftbridge, who's out in New York, close to you. She does a lot of um, Chair, she's developed chair kinetic yoga. Okay, that is good to know. Thank you for sharing, and I will check them out. Okay, and then you know, I, I can give you some more detailed um, information if you call me or email me later. Okay, any other questions? 
And let me say this, because I forgot to say this earlier. When I'm doing these, when I'm doing these live sessions like this on Zoom, these are for people who are enrolled in the in the virtual um, online course. These are for people who are going to travel to Kemet with us. And because of the fact that when we go to Kemet, we don't have like a whole, whole lot of time to get it. Like we're not going to be doing yoga all day. We're going to be traveling. We're going to be seeing temples and pyramids and tombs and different sites. We're going to be focusing on the history and the philosophy. And then we're going to get yoga practice in as we can especially on the four day now cruise when we have because if we have more we have more downtime okay and then for those who are going to Jamaica these classes are for you to help you be prepared because I want people to be prepared we're opening up a studio in Chicago and all of the classes that we teach are going to have an option for being in person or for streaming okay and so it's going to be more. There's going to be more, um, more um, opportunities for you to practice. You have to have some time to practice. A lot of times, people feel like they can't practice by itself. So I want you to have this as an opportunity to practice. All of these sessions that we're doing are recorded. You can click on the recording later. You can click on the link to Vimeo later on today, and you will see everything. You will see this whole video contained there. And then you also have your whole training manuals. You have your training manual and your instructional videos and your instructional meditation audio. All of those things were sent to you. You have to click, you have to open up your email, click on each link and see what's there and then follow them. You got a six part, um, six, you got a six part, um, six module Curriculum. Each module tells you where you what you what you should be reading, what video you should be watching, what you should be listening to, what questions you should answer, and so on and so forth. All the instructions are there. You have to take your time, open an e email, and just follow each step one at a time systematically. And everything that you need to have is there. Now, in fact, more than what you have, more than what you need to have is there, much more. It should be enough information that to keep you engaged for the next 10 years. Okay? Any other questions? Yes. Otep, yes, sir. This is Fabian. Who is that? Uh, Fabian, the only French girl. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just want to know uh, when we send you the video, uh, it's on your mail or dry because I did both, but I don't know if you received them. Oh, I did. I did receive them, but I, I had to go back and find the email. But um, sometimes if you have Gmail, I think you can have like a private link to YouTube. You can send me that. I think that's the easiest way. Okay, from Gmail uh, in your drive. No, if, if you have Gmail, I think you also have a YouTube channel, right? Yes. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have a YouTube where you can you can put. Yeah, you do. You have to go to um the studio and upload it there. Yeah, but but, it, but you can keep it private so that only I can see it. And okay. Okay. You can send me that link. I think that's easier than sending the drive. I will try. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Anybody else? Any other questions? Yes, your seer. What does your seer mean? What's your name mean? Your seer is the same as Asar. Asar, Osiris, Osiris, your seer, Asar. Asar is the um, or Asar or Yasir represents what in ancient in the ancient Egyptian or ancient Kemetic language, which is called a Neturu. Neturu means a 
a, 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 a divine representation of divinity, a divine, um, a divine representation of, of the creator, right? So if you think about the creator, the creator is called Netter. So that's the terminology. So you see it's spelled N-T-R. Netter is that force, that one unified force that brought everything into creation. Netteru are different aspects of the one. So you think about Netter as being the entire circle, the Netteru are like a degree. If a circle got 365 degrees or 360 degrees, then the Netteru is one degree, one little aspect of the whole. And so our SAR is that aspect that represents the concept and the idea of rejuvenation, revitalization, and rebirth, resurrection. So in the story, in the, in the cosmological story about Asar, he died, but then he was resurrected again. And so I chose that name because of the fact that I felt that when I changed my lifestyle from being one of eating meat, drinking, smoking, doing drugs and all that stuff, I was dead. And when, when I adopted yoga, fruits and vegetables, the breath and the spiritual path of yoga, I was reborn. And so, the, and, and so the concept of resurrection, the concept of rebirth, these are universal concepts that are encoded in almost all the different cultures that you see around the world, especially the native cultures, the indigenous cultures, the African cultures, the Asian cultures, right? We see this whole idea of, 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 of life, a birth, death, and then rebirth represented. You can become reborn um, on various levels. You can become reborn from a um, psychological level, from, from a spiritual level, from a health and wellness level. You know, we're always trying to get to a point where we are re, we are where we are re resurrecting ourselves. And so this whole idea of resurrection becoming reborn, this is a concept which is, which is endemic to African culture. Every time you go to a different life cycle, you, that is a process of resurrection. In African cultures, oftentimes you receive a new name when you go from one life cycle, when you go from one stage of development to the next stage of development, right? So when you're, so when you're a baby, when you are I just had a, my granddaughter just gave birth to her baby, right? And so I'm a great grandfather. So that baby, because um, my daughter, my granddaughter's mother is a priestess, they went through a ritual, they did readings to discover what is the name that this baby is supposed to have. Who is this baby? What is this baby's life path? And then they gave the baby names that represent who this baby is and why this baby came here. And so when she goes to another stage of development, perhaps when she goes from um, childhood to adolescence or from childhood or from adolescence to adulthood, maybe she will receive a new name, okay? So the names are very significant and how we name ourselves, how we call ourselves, are very important. So when I chose my name, I chose my name based upon who I wanted to be, who I felt like I, I am and who I wanted to be. I did not have any, I did not have any uh, body to guide me. I did this alone by myself. And then I used to call myself Osiris or Osiris. And when I met my teacher of Ancient, my teacher's name was, um, was um, Dr. Jacob Carruthers. I was working on my master's degree in inner city studies, which was an African civic curriculum. And we was learning how to be, 
hieroglyphs. How did we would do nature? He said, your name is not pronounced Osiris. He said, that is the Greek pronunciation. He said, your name should be pronounced Yesir. And so I call myself Yesir because I feel like I'm reborn, I'm resurrected. I call my middle name Ra, like the energy and life force from the sun. And I call my last name Hotel. Number one, because it's a simple name, it's a common name. In ancient Egypt, there was a lot of hotel. It's like there's a lot of Smiths, Jones, and Williams, right? And Johnsons, you know, among Black folks. Hotel was a common name. A hotel simply means peace. It just means peace. So Yasser Ra Hotel, okay? Any other questions? Y'all still there, right? I'm here. Yes, we're here. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure because it's so, so quiet. Okay, now, what I want to do is um, share with you all some ideas and some tips about um, longevity. These are common, the thing I'm going to share with you are common things that yoga practitioners do. The practices of yoga have become part of the holistic health and wellness um, lexicon or language of various practices that's done, right? So in yoga, we have always done things like internal cleansing. You can call it internal cleansing that I'm speaking of, you can call it um, water irrigation, okay? So we have a, so in our, in our gut, we have, we have our um, colon, which is the pipe or the tubing to which the waste leaves from our body, okay? The colon is the waste disposal system of the body, okay? The colon is about six feet in length. And that is the tube within the body that the waste goes through. You have, a, you have something called intestines. You have 23 feet of intestines, okay? The intestines or the, or, or the, um, the intestines is where your food is assimilated into your body and processed into your body. I'm sorry, I got to do something right fast. <clears throat> okay. So your, so, so your colon, I mean, your intestines is where, you know, it processes and it, it assimilates the waste. It assimilates the food that you consume. And then your colon eliminates the waste, right? And so from, and so yogis from the beginning of, yoga practice have always considered maintaining the health and the wellness and the condition of the colon and the intestines and the whole gut area of the body as being essential within the practice of yoga, okay? And so um, we engage in certain practices like water irrigation or carbonic irrigation. So this is what we use. Now, you all have heard the term colonic, right? Many of you have probably had colonics before, but um, which is good. If you could, you know, if you want to pay somebody or you want to um, go and have a colonic done, that's fine and you should do that. But we say that periodically, whether you're doing a colonic or an enema, that you should um, do this um, at certain key times of the year. You should go to a cleanse at least four times a year. So a cleanse is gonna be, I'm gonna clean out my colon. 
I'm going to um, fast or go on a semi-fast. So fasting means I'm just going to drink liquids, right? Or I might just drink water. A semi-fast is where I'm just going to eat fruits and vegetables. I'm not going to eat any animal products, which I don't, as a yogi, I'm not going to eat animal products anyway. And um, so I'm, I'm going to eliminate animal products. I'm going to eliminate my beans. I'm going to eliminate rice. I'm going to eliminate bread and things that I might normally eat. And I might just eat raw vegetables and raw um, fruit and fresh juices and herbal teas and stuff, right? And then in conjunction with that, I'm going to cleanse my colon. And so, um, I don't know why people be calling me, but they know I'm working. <laughs> Sorry. And so, um, and so, um, this bag, I forget how much it holds, maybe a couple of quarts, but you fill up this bag with lukewarm water. You put this in it, and then you're going to use this too for the water to come in. And it has a valve here, right? That opens and closes, right? So you cut up, you can, you know, um, now it's closed. You can just use your thumb to open it. You can buy this at Walgreens, CVS, any type of pharmacy. This, this thing here is what you're gonna use to insert it inside of you, inside of your, um, you know, your, your, your rectum. You put some oil, you put some coconut oil on it so that it's not going to damage. It's not going to damage you anyway. A lot of times people are so weird and so, oh, that, that, you know, it don't mean that you're gay because you clean out your colon. It just means that you're conscientious about taking care of your health and your wellness, right? And so, um, so, so, so you let the water go inside of you, right? You swish it around with your hand, you sit on the toilet, and you, you release all the you release waste from your from your system. And in one session, you may you may you may fill this up two or three times and apply it so that every other day or every uh, every two days, every three days, you would do this while you're going through your cleansing process, right? And um, you can also if you can also put some mild, um, you can make like a, a, a couple of cups of peppermint tea and you can mix the peppermint tea. Now, when I'm saying peppermint tea, don't put no tea bags and stuff in here, right? Or no, or no um, tea leaves. I'm saying make the tea, strain it or whatever, and then mix that with the water and have it, have it lukewarm. You want, you want this water to be lukewarm that you put in here, right? And so you use that to, to cleanse your colon. And you're going to cleanse your colon in conjunction with your diet. I mean, with um, changing your diet and consuming your fruits, your vegetables, and only eating raw foods or fasting, right? Depends where you are. This here, this is a product that one of my um, friends and associates make. It's called whole body detox cleanse, right? And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up here. Now, you you, you know, she, she's in Chicago, she's local, um, but you can see the stuff and you can see that it's a powder. And so the ingredients in here is, um, I need glasses. Fenugreek, seeds, chamomile, Acacia, green papaya, um, some kind of a cactus, apple pectin, wormwood, um, senna, black walnut, um, clove, probiotics, prebiotics, so on and so forth. So you would take something like this. This is something that you would use in conjunction with your cleanse. You can use this without doing the water irrigation. 
or you can use this in conjunction with the water irrigation, right? And so you can use this, you would take a tablespoon of this, mix it with some fresh water, with some water or some apple juice or pear juice. Apple or pear juice because it's alkaline. You don't want to mix it with like orange juice or lemonade or something. You want to mix it with something that's alkaline, right? That's not acidic. And then you want to drink this and then drink a lot of water with it because this is going to expand in your colon. It's going to take on the shape of your colon, so to speak, and it's going to help to push waste out of the um, pockets. The colon is, you know, like, like I said, it, it's, it's going to really go through not only your colon, it's going to go through your whole intestinal tract, right? The colonic, the, the uh, colonic or the um, enema is only going to get a, 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 a smaller section of your colon. This is going to go through your whole 23 feet of intestine. Plus, it's going to go through your coating. It's going to help to push waste all out of you. When you do, and this also, this, when I was reading the ingredients, I was saying it's got wormwood and other, other um, ingredients in it that are good for getting parasites from your body, right? So parasites, um, you know, uh, you know, is something that's very detrimental to people's health, okay? And so a lot of times people could be, infested with parasites and we're thinking that the parasite we're thinking that we have a this condition or that condition and we really have a parasitic inf infestation so this is helping with that also the, the push waste to the colon and so on and so forth so if you use i recommend that you use a formula like this in conjunction with your enema or your colonic Okay, and so um, um, you use this for about two or three days. On about the third day, you take your enema or your colonic. And you take you can and you take this. You can and you can take this even when you're not fasting. You can just take it as a um, as a um, tune up for your system. You know. This kind of be, it's not going to make you have diarrhea or nothing like that. But, you know, you should just want to make sure that you, you know, in a place where you can um, use the bathroom if you need to go. Okay. Any questions about this? Either one of these. What, what's the name of that? Oh, yeah. Where can we get the one that your friend makes? Um. He's in Chicago. My phone number not even on here. Um, send me a, send me an email if you really um, if you really want to know. Send me an email. I don't know. I don't know if she mails it off or ships it or what. Um, I'll be in Chicago soon. Okay. Well, she's on seventy third in Jeffrey. But her name is Camilla. Um, actually. I'm a I think my phone, let me see if my phone is there. Let me see if I can give you her phone number. Her name is Camilla Alfred. And um, she used to be, uh, um, now you all probably have not heard of this lady, but her name is Alvenia Fulton. Alvina Fulton is the black lady from Chicago who taught Dick Gregory and many of the um, Hollywood people about holistic health, fasting, cleansing. And Camilla used to be her apprentice, used to work with her, right? And so um, I still don't see her phone number. Ooh, I'm, I'm, Um, at a, I'm looking at the old thing. Sorry. Master, what's her name again? Maybe we can look her up on social media. Camilla. Um, she's on Facebook. Her name is Camilla C-A-M-I-L-L-A 
And her last name is Alfred, A-L-F-R-E-D, Alfred. Great. Thank you. Her number, her number is 312-480-9588. And her other number is 847-514-4662. Camilla Alfred, she was at Soul Yoga Fest. Some, some of y'all might have been at Soul Yoga Fest. She was there and she was, a, she was on a presentation. We also gave her an award at Soul Yoga Fest, right? And so uh, I think Sean has posted her, um, her Facebook <coughs> there for you all to see, okay? So, um, any other questions about that? Also, we're going to be launching um, a nutritional line of herbs and cleansing products ourselves. And this is, we got I'm gonna change the label, but it's gonna be something like this. And so um, anyway, I'm not gonna talk too much about that until I'm ready to do it. Okay, any other questions about internal cleansing? In your training manual, you have a six week program that's been there, sitting there waiting for you to read it. Already in your training, it tells you step by step. Week one, do this. Week two, do that. Week three, do this, so on and so forth. That is in your training manual, okay? So it's a lot of stuff I think people, do, people never see for whatever reason, you know? Maybe because it's a lot of information or maybe they're not looking, but it's, it's so much information there. It, it, it should keep you occupied for years, okay? Anything that you really want to know, I try to put everything in there, okay? Any other, any questions, any other questions? Okay, now, another aspect of cleansing, and you know, I think we've gone over this before, but I'm, I'm going to mention it again, is the neti pot to cleanse your nostrils and your sinus cavities and the back of your throat. Your nostrils, your sinus cavities, all, all around here is your sinus cavities, right? Your sinuses are spongy tissue. And this is where you get congestion. And so when you put the water, you get your, um, this is called Neo, Neo Med Sinus Rinse. And so what this is, pre-mixed pre little packets of salt, saline solution. And so you're going to, um, Put one packet of this into some lukewarm water, mix it up, stir it up, it dissolves very easily. And then you pour it, some to your left nostril, pour some to your right nostril. And um, you have to let the, you know, when, when I pour it to one nostril, I close my, I close off and I blow it out. And then I blow it out to the other one. Most of the time, you can get it to come through the back of the, you can get it to come through the back of your throat and you can feel it um, cleaning out your throat area. And so this is going to help to get rid of um, mucus, phlegm, viruses, bacteria, impurities, toxins that can build up in your system that can cause you to become sick, right? And so... <laughs> who that? Who that blowing their nose out of all loud and stuff? Go go on go on on me. I'm telling ahead of everybody on me. Okay, so um, so but you you know you should uh, uh, you should be a regular user. If you're a yoga practitioner, you should be a regular user of your neti pot. They also have this thing. So this comes, you can buy this, they come together. You can buy this at Walgreens, CVS, you know, um, you know, it's, it's easy to find. And, you know, you put the lukewarm water in here, you put the, um, you put the salt in there, 
you turn it, you close it, you shake it up, close, you know, you close it up, shake it back up, you squeeze the water, and it goes even deeper into your sinuses. It doesn't hurt. It may sound like it hurt or something. It doesn't hurt. The um the salt that's in here is very um, you know, it is it's not abrasive or you know bothersome to your to your tissues. It's very nice to your tissues. And so you feel good. It's gonna make you feel good. It's gonna get all the gunk and stuff out of your system. And it helps to improve the health of those sinus cavities. It helps to get the um, garbage out of the back of your throat. And so in conjunction with doing your internal cleanse down here, you do your internal cleanse up here, right? And so you wanna clean out your nostrils. You can use this um, little spray thing. You can use your um, neti pot and you use your, um, you know, your saline solution, okay? Your salt, any questions about that? Yes, you see her? My, hi, my name is Michelle. Michelle. Um, I have a question about the mixture for the neti pot. Uh, can we use, um, instead of regular salt, can we use like Himalayan salt and then dissolve it in the lukewarm water? I don't, I don't know. I would just get this. Okay. This is all I, this is all I know about. I've never used anything but this. I think I used to use, I used to just use plain sea salt too. Okay. I, about this. So if you want to use Himalayan salt, you can do that too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But I, I, I used to use sea salt, but just a little bit. But mm -hmm. I find these are pre-measured and they're much easier to use and they're much easier to dissolve. So I'm not pouring no rocks and stuff in my nose. Right. Okay. No. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to mention too that you want for people to know that you'd want to make sure you're using not tap water for either of those methods, whether it's the cleaning of the colon or the nostrils. Yeah. Yeah. If you can use better water than the tap water. Yeah. Yeah, you should use um distilled water is good. You can get a gallon of distilled water, a couple of gallons of distilled water and use that. The thing about distilled water is that it helps to, it helps to pull stuff out of you because it doesn't have any nutrients. It's, it's what they call an atomic nutrient. So it helps to um, pull stuff out of you. So, or you can use fresh spring water, or you can use something that's an alternative to um, an alternative to um, tap water. You know, sometimes if you got a filter in your house. Or I have like a, um, I have a thing that filters my water um, that I pour the tap water in and it has this, um, this filtering system. And so, you know, I use that because I don't, you know, by the time you start thinking about all these different types of water and everybody claiming that this is this and this is that, I'd rather just use that water and it's cheaper. And if you don't have options to buy water, you can just boil tap water, but you just gotta make sure it's cooled down before you use it. Yeah. Well, when you boil your water, the only thing boiling water does is get rid of um, bacteria. And most tap water don't really have a lot of bacteria and junk viruses and stuff in it. It's not gonna get rid of the um, hard chemicals or chlorine or, um, you know, some, a lot of the impurities that they find in, in um, in tap water, um, boiling is just like the it's like the kill germs and stuff. So you have to take all that in, all of that into consideration. But thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, <clears throat> next thing is. Um, when you're doing your fat, oh, longevity, right? When you eat food, you want to eat the highest quality of food. It's just like I drive a Lexus, right? I ain't trying to brag or nothing. I'm just saying I drive a Lexus. I don't got no Mercedes, I ain't got no Mercedes money, but I drive a Lexus. I got to put premium gas into that car. 
if I put some regular gas, it might start to act up, right? Um, but I drive that particular car because of the quality of the car. That's why I defeated the gasoline that's gonna be quality for it. That's gonna run, allow it to run at its highest level of efficiency. So I gotta put the 93 octane gas in it, right? And so my body is the same way. I wanna put the highest level of, um, of, um, of nutrients into my body, something that is very easy to digest, right? But it's gonna give me a high level of nutrients in return. So I use my bee pollen. Um, this is bee pollen. Bee pollen is the pollen that comes from the flower. The, the pollen is the reproductive material, the genetic material of the plants. And so um, it's a very pure, high quality nutritious. Everything, because it's genetic material, because it's reproductive material, it has everything in it. So you have all of your amino acids in bee pollen. You have all of your B complex vitamins in bee pollen. You have all of your enzymes in bee pollen. And you have a lot of stuff in here that human beings don't even know about because human beings don't know everything. And so you take a tablespoon of this every day and you put it with your smoothie and you consume that. Another thing that you want to take into your body is your um, spirulina, okay? And I don't know how clear that is, but spirulina, that's your spirulina, which is a blue-green algae. Algae is another very simple, pure type of a, a plant organism that grows on the surface of fresh water, on bodies of fresh water, right? And um, you can get this, and it, you know, and so it interacts directly with the with the um, sunlight. You can see that it's very, very green, right? And so that means that. Um, it's full of chlorophyll. It's, 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 the, it's the closest you can get to eating the sun without going all the way up to the sun and burning up. If you know what I mean, right? So um, bee pollen is all of your amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. This is protein. Your blood is protein. Your bones is protein. Your tissues are protein. And so they're composed of amino acids. Amino acids are the foundation of all life. And these two things contain your amino acids. So these are things that you wanna have in your body. And they're easy to digest. They digest very easily, but they give you a tremendous amount of energy in return. So usually they say you ate a chunk of meat. It's gonna be very hard for your body to digest. So your body is going to take a lot of resources from other things and put them to work to digest the meat. And then you're going to get tired because your body is trying to digest meat. And when you eat this, it's easy to digest. The meat doesn't give you a lot of return for the amount of energy that your body is using to digest it. This takes very little energy for your body to digest and it gives your body a tremendous amount in return. So economically, from the, econ from the economics of energy exchange, this is much better than consuming meat, some sausages and eggs with breakfast, bacon and eggs, um, some cheese, a cheese omelet, whatever it is that people like to eat. This is going to give you way much better energy and so on and so forth. I make my smoothies in the morning and I, 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 and I put my bee pollen, my, um, my, my bee pollen, my spirulina, and other ingredients in it. And I go ride my bike 30 miles and I don't, I don't eat nothing. I don't have no energy bar. I just have some water. And this sustains me for that amount of time. Okay. Now this is called, these are mushrooms. 
So this is your cordyceps mushrooms, okay? And so um, these are good for your digest, for your um, respiratory system. And so you're doing yoga. You want to have a strong respiratory system. When cordyceps was first discovered on, in China, only the emperor had access to them because they were so rare to find. And so mushrooms, they give you energy, power, endurance. That's what it says here on the package, right? And so mushrooms, these are, so this is, a, this is in a powdered form. You got lion's mane. Lion's mane is good for your brain, okay? As you age, you know, of course you lose, um, you know, um, abilities in your brain. So this is for this is good for your memory, for your nervous system, and for focus. You know, so especially I was talking to somebody who has an elderly father, and he was going he's going through you know issues with his memory, with his um maybe going towards dementia. I told him to get some lion's mane to help him. Okay, so you put this in your smoothie every day. And um, then you got chaga. And this is, I'm just giving you, I'm just showing you a few, few little items, but you got chaga. Chaga is good for your um, antioxidants, right? So this is helping your body, this is helping your immune, your immune system to become stronger so that your body can naturally fight off infections and invading organisms like bacteria, viruses, and so on and so forth. So chaga, okay? And so you can get all this at the health food store. You can get it at Whole Foods. You can go online. You can order it. But do your work. Do, do your research into um, herbal or nutritional um, mushrooms. All of these things come in powder. I take a teaspoon of each one. I put it in my smoothie. I mix it up. I blend it up. And that's how I start my day. And I feel a difference in how I, if I do it, on the, and if, if I do it on a day, I feel tremendous difference. And if I don't do it on a particular day, okay? So I think that's about as much as I got to talk about. Any questions? Peace, this is Men Shah. Um, what's up? I just uh, had a question in terms of um, kind of the, the supplements and just preparing for the trip, um, actually. Would you recommend, um, cause Similar, like you know, making smoothies and that kind of thing. Obviously, I'm not planning to like flour the blender or anything. Um, but what would you recommend in terms of just sustaining, you know, th those kind of regimens, um, especially when when we travel to uh, Kemet? Well, what I try to do, I have this little portable blender about this big. The last time I had it in Africa, it died on me. I just threw it away because I, I paid about thirty dollars for it. But I, I'm gonna, I can go grab it right fast. I think it's close by. I bought about four of them because I, I saw them online. I said, I, I, so it says, a, it's, it, you power it, you know, you, you, you charge it and then it holds the charge. And then when I get access to some juice, I have my bee pollen. I might put, you know, I might, I might put this in like a plastic container, plastic bag, because I'm not gonna bring this whole big, big thing with me. I might put my, Dipping powders, or I might mix them all together, so I can just take some orange juice. You know, with me in the hotel, or we at some place where we're gonna have breakfast. Oftentimes, they have fresh juice. I put, I get the fresh juice. I put it in a little blender thing, and then I blend it up, and that's what I drink. Um, you can also get most of these things in um, capsule form, as opposed to tablet. So the capsule is where you're gonna get a veggie cap and they're gonna put the powder in there. And so if you can't blend it and all that stuff, um, you can just get the capsule and just eat it and get it into your body that way, you know? And so I do a combination of those things, right? Um, and so I find, I, found, I find that to be convenient for, um, for traveling, right? Um, and so I don't know that, if you give me, I hate to do this. 
that I had to run away from the video. Give me one second, see if I can find this. If I can't find it real fast, I'll come right back. Hold on one second. Okay, I did have them close by. Okay. <clears throat> so these are my little portable uh, blenders. I, they, I haven't even opened these before because um, I bought four of them. Um, These little portable, they call blend, blend jet. So blend jet. And so, um, oops, there you go. Yes, you can, it, it's already blending. You plug it in right here, you charge it. And so you can take the cord with you, you can, you can, you can keep it charged. And uh, there it is. So I recommend that you carry this with you if you're really going to be conscientious about, um, you know, your nutrients and stuff. Quick little, question. Can you get that through TSA or do they make you put that in your luggage and check it? I don't know. You might, you might, I might, you might just, you're going to check, you know, you're going to, you're going to Egypt, you're going to check baggage anyway. You might as well just put it in your, in your check bags. But, um, they might bother you. I, I don't. I don't really know because I always have it in my chin bag. So I want to carry. I was up. just asking because um, somewhere on the TSA website they said you couldn't bring blenders, and you know I'm always on the go, so I was just curious. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know. I never. I never tried to bring it to, to TSA. One more thing. Hold yeah, on. they're going to make you check it. I did it before because I had a neutral bullet I traveled with, and it has a blade on it. Even though it's a very small blade, they still be tripping. So you just put it in your check bag and you'll be all right. Thank you. Another thing um, this is a brand of um, this is a brand of um, vitamins that I use. This is a multivitamin. Um, it has vitamins and minerals, and it's raw, and it's very, it's made out of food, so this is not synthetic. So let's say you go to uh, some place like um, GNC, they may have, I don't know if they sell this in GNC or not, but they may have a lot of synthetic types of um, vitamins and um, supplements that are not going to digest. And so when you take them, and then a little bit later you urinate, you see your urine comes out all yellow. That's your vitamins that you took, that your body couldn't utilize because it's not recognized by your body. So vitamin cold, and they got it for different ages. This is, this is, this is one for 50 and wiser men. They got, they got them for men, they got them for women, they got them for younger people, they got them for older people like me, right? And so, um, but, it, but, but again, it's all made from food and this is all capsules. And so they're easy to digest, they're easy to assimilate by your, you know, your body can assimilate these easily. And um, you could even take them out of the capsule and mix them with some juice if you wanted. You don't you have a hard time swallowing and stuff. And um, so I recommend that you get this. So if you come into if you come into Kemet, if you come into Jamaica, or even if you're not, I recommend that you get some. Um, if, you, if you're going to get supplements, I recommend this particular brand. They sell B complex vitamins. They sell vitamin C. They sell vitamin D. They sell calcium. They sell a whole lot of different um, high quality supplements that you can add to your diet. Okay. And so, um, you know, you don't, you may not want to carry the whole big bottle like this, but this glass, you can just take it, put it, in, put some into a, you know, um, measure out how many you're going to need for the time you're going to be gone, put them in a plastic bag. Another thing I'm gonna tell you, because I like to eat snacks, bring you some snacks with you 
because you're not going to be able to, to buy snacks there. So get you, bring your raisins, your nuts, your dates, and stuff like that, um, or whatever kind of little bars you might like to eat. Don't just get them for the airplane ride. Get them for the whole trip, right? Because we're going to be gone for like almost two weeks. So you know, so get you know, get the stuff that you like. Get the things that's going to make you happy, and satisfied. You know, and bring it with you. You know. Because they're not gonna, you're not gonna, be, you're not gonna have access to like grocery stores or snacks and stuff like that, you know. Um, so bring your, bring your things with you if you like to, if you like to have little snacks to chew on or eat or whatever, you know, nuts, seeds, dried fruits, so on and so forth. Okay, so get your blender. It's called Blend Jet. It's online. I don't know how good a quality they are, but they only cost like around thirty dollars. So I just bought like I think I bought six of them, and I gave some away to some of the people. Okay. Any other questions? Question. Um, yeah. I'm I'm not going on this uh, trip to Egypt, but question: it, it, There's no markets where where you guys go. Not not grocery store, but like you know, like an outside market where they might have dates or you know certain types of nuts and stuff. If you no, want, you you don't want to do it. You don't do it. If you want some dates, but it's got flies all over them and stuff like that <laughs> at the outdoor market, you can get those. But we don't. <laughs> you know, everything we do is very controlled because you know. Yes, you, yes. You don't want to get sick. Just go to the big, huge market and go here and go there. You know, we're, we're okay. Not, you know, we're not doing all of that. Yeah. Okay. Has anybody gotten sick off of eating like that? Like eating in the, at the market or whatever? In your experience? We don't go, we don't go to those kind of markets. and that's Never, like, ever. Okay. Like that. You know, we, we buy okay. things. You can get sick. You know, if you drink yeah. water, if you drink the water, like the regular tap water, you can get sick. Gotcha. You gotcha. Know, the, the water is not purified. You know, like our water got garbage in it. But um, for the most part, it's, it has low levels, to my knowledge, anyway. It's got low right. levels, like things like bacteria and stuff. You drink water right. over there, you're going to get the runs, you're going to get sick, and, you know, you're okay. going you're gonna, you're gonna to cool. catch something. Okay, so, so don't eat the stuff. So, okay. when you're, so, so, so let me finish. So when you're in Africa, in general, you don't want to drink the water. I got food poisoning when I was in Ethiopia, I was damn near dead, right? Mm. Okay. You have to be careful about what you're doing. Okay. And so even if you're eating um, like some um, salad and they wash the salad with their water, you can get sick from that. So I still, so at this point, cause I've been there 20 some times, I eat the salad, don't bother me. But when I first went there, I got kind of sick. And the only thing I was doing was just brushing my teeth. I was brushing my teeth with this with the tap water. And I, and I and I think that's only I think that's kind of made me sick. But it, you know, I got rid of it, you know. Um, they, have a, they have a they have a, they have this little antibiotic that if you really need to get it, it'll knock out all this stuff, you know, that they they it's, it's it, you can only get it over there. They don't sell it any place, like they don't sell it in the US. But our tour guide would have it, would have some. And if you get sick, if you get the um, whatever that parasite or whatever that bacteria is that they have over there that makes foreigners sick, mm -hmm. you, know, you take that as a last resort. But you should take your, um, and I'm, I'm talking to the people that's going on the trip, you should take your vitamin C. Um, Hold on one second. Let me let me let me go and do this. <clears throat> they have something called emergency, right? Emergency is like a little packet. Everybody, y'all seen this? I know some maybe some of y'all can speak on it, but um, I get this vitamin C powder. And I take this with me, I mix it with water. It's very, um, you know, it's very powerful, but vitamin C is an antibacterial, um, it's an anti, um, you know, viral, 
And so it didn't help to knock out, it didn't help to knock stuff out of your system. Um, and so you want to you want to keep your vitamin, your level of vitamin C up. And so because of the fact that we're traveling in Egypt, when you say I'm a vegetarian, I'm a vegan, that doesn't compute to their mind, right? They want to give you some bread. They'll, they'll give you a whole bunch of bread and they say, oh, vegetarian, vegetarian, right? And it's hard to make them understand that when we say vegetarian, we, we, want, we want a lot of fruit. We want a lot of vegetables. We want a green leafy vegetable you know, because they, their consciousness is not the same. So, um, so you have to learn how to compensate, bring you some supplemental um, forms of nutrition with you, bring your tea bags with you. If you drink certain type of teas and you have your tea bags, bring them with you and just, you know, I bring my thermos, my thermos jug with me. When I go to the restaurant, I say, fill this up with hot water. And then I put my teas in there. And I, and I have that to drink all day long. I just sip off of that. And none of the teas I drink is our medicinal teas. So I have my um, teas for my lungs, teas for my digestive system, teas for my energy, and so on and so forth. And I mix all of that together into my thermos. And then I have my thermos. My thermos is keeping my tea hot. I put my ginger in there. I might put some cayenne pepper in there. Um, I, if we're in a hotel in the restaurant, I get some lemon or some lime and squeeze it in there. That's how I do my thing, you know. And so that's what I recommend that people do if you're going to be traveling international and things like that, you know, because you want to, um, you know, you don't you, you want to maintain your health, you know, no matter where you are, even even though you can't, you don't have access to the same things. You know. Okay, any other questions? All right, well, we're going to end it there again. I want to thank you all for spending your time with me on my birthday. You know, um, I turned 68 today, and um, um, it was wonderful spending my time doing this. I started practicing yoga and became a vegan when I was 21. So what's that, 47 years, 40, what's that, 47 years later, I'm still doing it. And, um, you know, I'm glad to be able to share with you and do it at the same time. So I look forward to seeing people in, in Kemet um, and so on and so forth. And then also in Jamaica, for those who's coming to Jamaica, and for those who's in the online course, I look forward to seeing your um, papers and your videos. Hotel, on Uja See you next time. Hotel. 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 Thank you. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday again. Thank you for sharing your yes. day with us. Happy birthday. Oh, Todd, thank you. Happy almost born time. Oh, uh, twelve ten, my time. It was like two o'clock. I missed it. I was gonna acknowledge it at twelve ten, but I looked at the watch. It was twelve forty eight. <laughs> so anyway, it's all good. Peace, hotel. Hotel. Okay.